Uh, let's have a look. Let's check if we're live. Um, let's have a little video. Just live, so. live, are we live? Dave, is, is the fan causing any noise just while we're Your here? fan or my fan? Mine. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> I can't hear yours. That's good. That's good news. That is good news. Yeah, you can't hear um, mine. Genuinely, do you want to know why? Because it's stuffed up my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Your fan is stuck up your t-shirt. Well, I'm not 100% sure. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's how it's got to be done. Wow. To uh, to any other track has just joined us. Um, hey, Charlene. Hey, Mark. Hey, Daryl. Um, yeah, you. Were, if you arrived early, then you would have got a lovely glimpse of what Dave's got up his shirt. Yeah, what a great bit of his sleeve. I actually, um, I totally forgot, I've got to send a, uh, we haven't been back to the office since the last live, and um, yeah. I've got to send out a buff. You have, you have, you owe a buff, yeah, we've, um, just to, to fill everyone in, our, um, everyone's working remotely at the moment, um, because the, the air con's broke in the office. Yeah. And it's been, it's a very hot office, so yeah, we've had to, um, obviously last couple of days, but it's just been, it's been a bit cosy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we have, um, we're all working remotely again, it's like, it was like back in those good old days a couple of years ago. Well, they're not very good old days at all. But yeah, the, uh, the days when we had to work from home. Um, Marky V is like, I can't unsee that. <laughs> Let me wow, tell you. But I yeah, no, I no, imagine Lord, I get to see that more often. It was Laura What's Collins. I'm, I just double checked. I've, I've got her details, her address and everything. I just got to gotta send her the post. But don't worry, Laura, it's happening. Mark. Look, um, we're coming through loud and clear anyway. And cheers for joining us. I say, if you have joined us, um, other than looking at the Dave's uh, T-shirt, at the fan, um, yeah, just let us know who's here. And nice to always um, see. So we got who else we got in here? We've got Mona as well. We've got Kia. We've got Rebecca and Bri Bri. Exactly. Stay hydrated. It's all about the hydration. Yeah. I, I think I'm, I'm on time with this one as well, Dave. Look at that. I think I'm actually bang on time. Yeah, see, I've gone old school and just a bottle of sparkling water. But look, you can see how cold that is. That is really cold. But yeah, um, that's cold. I'm trying to drink my two liters a day, and this is helping because I've been a bit not been the best at hydration, so I, I need to listen to my own advice sometimes. Yeah, Keep we should do a live about it one day <laughs> about hydration. Yeah, yeah, we should actually. Well, I, I think we've we've done a, a lot about hydration over the last couple of years, but um, anyway, today it may seem a bit crazy that on what is probably going to be the hottest day of the year in the UK, we've decided to do it all about waterproofs uh, mm, mm. Now, you believe it or not we do like to plan these in um and this one was uh, we, we planned it about four or five weeks ago not knowing that it'd be what it is today and i thought you know what we're still going to go ahead we're still going to do it all about waterproofs even though it's absolutely boiling so yeah so yeah it's, it's kind of a bit different today we were like do we change it do we do we talk about well, some cream or some of that but you know we were like no do more yeah let, let, let's we thought we'll stick with it because there's going to be a thunderstorm yeah. after this and we thought well you know there's no point us telling you which waterproof jacket to get when it's already raining and also if you're going to buy one at the height of summers perhaps when you'll get it the cheapest um so very yeah, this point so i've actually thought about it yeah we did this deliberately it was very well <laughs> um, oh Oh, I see. Uh, I hope the. Um, I hope you've recovered from COVID, mate. Um, oh, off the yeah. back of it, yeah. Or, or, or not, not fun. Not fun. Charlie, not um, What's the star sendy button for? Don't know. Click it, Charlie. Do it. Um, it's it's basically on, on Facebook. They uh, they they've been, they introduced it a while back now, but it's become more popular. But basically, you can send stars if you want. And apparently, if we get lots of stars, we get some money. But don't feel like you have to. Because I think it's, it takes a lot of stars to get even like the smallest. I don't think you have to. But if you want to give us some stars, great stuff. I think the Facebook algorithm would definitely like that. Um, if anything, it's just good to have you here. We don't need those stars. We need you engaged, commenting, questioning, enjoying it. That, that, that's what we prefer rather than stars. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Leah, hotter than the Shearer's armpit. No, wow. she means a Shearer. It's Alan Shearer's armpit. Oh. I, I, he had a hot armpit, did he? I don't know. That's just what I read it, and then I realised where <laughs> Leah's from, and I was like, okay, I got it. Why would that yeah, be? Yeah. They have like a sheep under their arm or something, do they? Yeah, that's exactly it. You John would know. We, we need to get the great bald yeti and ask him. Yeah, the farming liaison officer. He, he's he the would, official. Uh, he would know. know. Yeah, he would know. <laughs> Here's Bri. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're going to have a Trek training weekend, Bri, I know you have definitely been on one. 
That was yep. a wet and windy one. You'll need heavy duty waterproofs to wear over your waterproofs. 100%. Hey, hey, there's John. He's on here. The yeah. Shearer himself. The Greek bald yeti, the farming liaison <laughs> officer. John, um, wear a hat, okay? Wear a hat today. It's really yes, important. Definitely wear a hat. Um, so, yeah, going back to, to waterproofs then. So, yeah, a bit nuts. And it is crazy because I'm sweating. I know Dave is. I couldn't fit this fan under my t shirt like you, Dave. It's about that long. So it'd be interesting. But anyway, we're going to battle through. Waterproofs. Dave, where should we start on waterproofs? I know clearly um, it rains sometimes in the UK. Yeah. I, w it, it, I mean, being Wales, we are, um, we're born with gills in Wales, but we are partly aquatic by nature because it rains a lot. Um, I would say I don't think there's a trip that we do where you're not going to need some form of waterproof clothing. Yeah. Um, the weather is so unpredictable in these far-flung places of the world that, you know, yeah. particularly on Kilimanjaro, it's guaranteed to rain because it's got its own little microclimate. It's more like showers than monsoon rain. In yeah. Nepal, out of all the trips I've done, um, I definitely have had a little bit of rain. I think one time when me and Andy went, there was a lot of rain. I think the whole monsoon season came down in an hour. Um, yeah, so it's it's vitally important. But also, these waterproofs and stuff, particularly the jackets, it's something that's always, always, always in my day pack. It's yeah. just one of my essential items that gets stuffed in there um, because they're good as wind stoppers. You know, when you've been sweating a lot and you stop for lunch, they're good to throw on, you know, to make sure you, yeah. your body temperatures and plummet. Um, so, yeah, I would say top draw uh, important item up there with boots. Definitely. I mean, yeah, boots, down jacket, sleeping bag really would, would come into that as well. I think if there was one, I think you, you're right, Dave, on, on all the trips we do, um, it could happen, couldn't it? I mean, you know, there's certain times of year that it's highly, highly unlikely not to happen, like Morocco at the moment is very warm. Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's highly unlikely, but like you, like Dave said there, you know, a storm could come in at any time. Um, you know, and that, that goes on any trip that we do. So, yeah, you are right. And that's why we kind of bring it up, because you know, we want to make sure you've got you've got the good stuff. I mean, you don't with waterproofs. There's so many out there. I mean, we'll talk about a few. We've got a few here, Dave. I know you've got a few there. Some ones we use personally. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's very you know diff, varying levels. Like you can spend a hundred quid on a waterproof. You could spend six hundred pounds on a waterproof. Isn't it? It's such a broad spectrum, and you know, it, it depends what fit your but what fits your budget. Yeah. Um, and also what kind of you know what what you're going to use it for because. If you go in on, say, an Everest Base Camp trip and, you know, you're not doing much else, um, do you really want to spend the £600 on a waterproof? You know, when you could maybe budget for something a bit cheaper because it's not going to get used that much. Yeah. Then again, if you're out all the time and you think and, and you're kind of thinking, you know, five years ahead maybe and thinking, OK, I'm going to be maybe going to Ben Nevis, I'm going to be on Snowden, get out of the Peak District, you know, OK, I'm going to go um, do Killy, maybe Machu Picchu, Everest Base Camp. If you've got a few trips on your agenda, then it's definitely worth getting a decent one because i think dave we've learned this the hard way haven't we we, we bought jackets for 100 quid and you know that they they, they they they're all singing and dancing on their own website you buy them and it lasts for one or two decent rain showers yeah and then after that it just soaks through that clearly it's not built to the level yeah. that some jackets are built to right i think yeah there are some items where you know i'm i like to say you know you don't have to be a gear snob you know, you don't have to spend £100 on a base layer, but they are out there. Um, <coughs> there are some items that I do think it's, if you're going to invest money, um, yeah. investing in a good waterproof jacket is, it really does make a difference. It's the type of thing you never really want to spend the money on it because quite often you don't need it when you're buying it. You know, you're buying it for the future. Yeah. So you're thinking like, do I really want to spend £300, £400 on a jacket? Not really, but honestly, when you have to deploy that jacket in anger, it's the best thing you've ever spent. <laughs> you just spend in twice as much. That being said, you know, you can get really good jackets now. You don't like, yeah. I know there are some Archite Architerex jackets that are like £600, some mountain yeah. equipment ones that get up to that sort of level. There are ones in a in, in more of a mid range budget that are, that are definitely doable. I've got two jackets here that I have worn in anger. They both come to uh, Everest Base Camp with me and one of them actually, my Rab, has been to Killy and Base Camp a couple of times and those ones are sort of in the mid-range, you know, around about 200 yeah. pounds or something like that. Um, but actually, my God, I, I've got a couple, um, should we go yeah, into... what you got, Dave? 
So we go on, mate. Let's just show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. So the it's every like, like this primary is my, school, isn't it? This is what I got, parents. Yeah. This is my what I'd like to call my everyday carry. Um, yeah. This is the Rab Firewall. This one's a few years old, mate. Um, it's actually Rab's own waterproof make. Um, it's uh, it's called Pertex. This one's probably yeah, nearing the end. Of it. Yeah, Andy's got his. Andy, yours is new, right? Because you were uh, yours got donated to the Mountain Guards, didn't it? Uh, where did mine go? Uh, Mountain Guards slash somewhere in Cardiff. It was another jacket that got napped. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it happens every couple of years. I lose a jacket in Cardiff, right? You'd be, yeah, yeah. If you, if I mean, you saw a couple of years ago when my down jacket went missing. <laughs> I should lose mine because I could do with an upgrade. But um, <laughs> what's really cool? Same like, jacket. Yeah, the, jacket. The same one. Andy's one is a, like, so this one's at least, I think, I think this is three years old. Yeah. And honestly, well, though. But it's been, it's lasted the three years really solid. Yeah. And why I really like this jacket is that it's quite cool to wear. I tend to run hot. Part of the problem that I always get is, um, and I think I was actually talking, I think, to Shona about this on the Glencoe Challenge, where it was yeah. horrendous rain, but it wasn't cold. So I end up sweating just as much as I would, you know, and I end up getting just as wet as if I hadn't had the jacket on. So finding a jacket that's breathable and quite lightweight is good for me. One thing I always look at in a jacket is these vents. As you can see, these run the whole length of the arm, which I was really yeah, happy. They're really good. They're really good um, on that. It looks a bit weird because your arms end up like, they look like a bin bag has sort of flown off your arm. But um, yeah, it, it, this is really Vibration is, there, Dave? Uh, yeah, what that is, is uh, that's a call coming into the office that's being fed to my mum. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, that's one. Um, yeah, that's sort of my everyday carry. This is a good old friend of mine. I crashed my bike, hurt my knee in this. This has been um, wow. I've done, a lot. I've done a lot in that one. Now, probably what's more familiar, and I'd say, is more the is Gore Tex, right? That's what people are going to be familiar yeah, with. Yeah, because uh, yeah, in, in in the outdoor world, you 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 everyone would have heard of Gore Tex. Doesn't matter what jacket you buy. Yeah, Gore Tex is is, is is a huge huge brand in its own right. You know, people say I get a yeah. Gore Tex jacket, and that could be you know North Face Mountain Equipment. You know, it could be Rab, could be Burghaus, could be any of them. And I think it, it, it's based on a, you know, not go too scientific, but essentially it's it's a waterproof membrane. It's got a couple of different layers. Uh, the Gore-Tex Pro is, is three layers, you know, because, and again, that's pricier. Yeah. But essentially it means that it stops water from getting in and remains breathable because there's a lot of jackets, like we've all seen uh, like fisherman jackets, you know, the big, thick, almost plastic feeling jackets. Yeah, like the they have the rain off you. Yeah, but they do, they, they, you sweat. Big time. They're not good for active use. Yeah, they're really um, good if you've got to stand at the wheel of a fishing boat, uh, <laughs> not moving much. But uh, I, I wouldn't like to walk up a hill with one on end, right? <laughs> or, or running up a hill. Well, that, that was last week. That was last. That week. was last week. Are we still doing? We're not doing. Are we doing music? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, if it happens, it happens. But you know. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this here is my. Um, this is a Montane one. I actually had a really yeah, yes. good deal on this. This is a Gore-Tex Pro, as you can see. They always like to uh, put it like pretty proudly on here. This jacket, I don't pretty know if you... noisy as well, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you can tell through the noise, but it's a lot louder and like yeah. crinklier than that my is... um, than my Rab. Um, yeah. it's, got the, it's got the zips on here, but they don't go the whole length of the arm, but they go a little bit into the body. Um, so it still can remain quite cool. This one is one that I tend to wear... I'll be honest, I don't think I've worn it since I last did EBC because it's, I tend to sweat a bit too much in it. But if it was really cold and raining, um, this would be the one that, that I would wear. There's a picture of me at EBC with this one. Um, EBC 2019, April. Um, that's what that jacket's done. And yeah, as you can see, it's pretty... Like, it's a pretty sort of, uh, you know... Does the, yeah, it's, it's more of a heavy jewel substantial jacket isn't it that yeah one. exactly but um i guarantee that one, then? what's that sorry do you remember what the model is of that one i know it's mon it's montane isn't it i tell you what and why don't you talk to us for a little bit <laughs> i will i'm gonna get i'm gonna get my jacket yeah because um, this one is and also as well if there's anyone that might recognize that that painting that painted there that it is painting, that yeah. over there there's a few people on the live who i have lots to thank about for that painting Oh, you can see. I don't know if you can see me. There we go. Uh, so uh, that was the 
that's a Montane uh, Alpine Pro Gore-Tex. Nice. Yeah. Alpine Pro. Um, that must be two, three hundred quid, surely. That that sort of jacket. Uh, well, actually, I had an amazing deal on this one, and so that is a three hundred and twenty pound jacket. Um, but we've talked about good places to go shopping. One of them is a website called Sports Pursuit. Um, yeah, or nice. Sports Pursuit. Um, where I actually got that on there for it says here one eighty. So yeah, that was a pretty That's good. That's it. That's pretty good. You think? That Rab, which is probably not on the same level, although it still does a great job, is is, is a similar price, if not a little bit less. But yeah. Around about the same. So you can get some good deals on there. Yeah. Um, this one is, these are good washes, but this is my Berghaus Extreme 8000. So this I've had this for about four or five years. And it is, it's a very good jacket. That cost £450. And the, for the extreme range, the Berghaus extreme range, I think it goes from like five all the way up to nine, I think now. They're um, they're very, very good. They're, they're what they call bomb-proof, waterproof jackets. Um, if you've if you've heard of the, um, uh, is it the Mountain Equipment uh, Lotse or Nupse jacket? No, Lotse jacket. Um, it's historically like one of the best jackets you can buy. But these jackets are pretty much built on the same premise. Uh, there we go, Mountain Equipment Lotse. Gore-Tex Pro, essentially, and, and that, you know, is, is essentially bomb-proof. That yeah. being said, though, you know, I've been, you know, if you're on anything like a five to eight hour hike, and you I don't think you've got sometimes, you're going to get wet. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the fact is, though, using this on, say, like an Everest Base Camp trek, where you're hiking maybe on the, the lower parts of the trek that you might rain, or say Kilimanjaro, but it might rain maybe the first day or two, it doesn't, you know, though this jacket would do great. It really would. But, it, you know, it's a little bit heavier. Like the Rab that Dave said there, the Rab firewall is lighter. Um, you know, if you're trying to save some weight, um, especially if you're trying to save some weight, you know, going into uh, Lukla, maybe the Rab's better for you um, in that way. But whatever jacket you do get, definitely, you know, it's worth worth squeezing in that bag. You don't, you don't want to leave without it, really. Yeah. Um, because you've, I know, Dave, I know we're heavily leaning towards the Gore-Tex side. But I know, you know, the last few years we've kind of been learning more about the Paramo side of things, which is completely different. Yeah. Technology, Par right? Yeah. So Paramo use um, like a nick wax um, technology. Um, so it's not Gore-Tex and it's designed to be. I really like the Paramo stuff. It's, sorry if you yeah. can hear that dog, but I, if I close my window, I'll die. He always joins um, on the lives, that dog. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> well, um, his name's Biscuit, I found out the other day. It's quite cute. Man. Um, yeah, so I did have a Paramount jacket, but I cannot find it for the life of me, so it might be in my locker. But uh, essentially, if you've seen it, it's a, it's a soft shell material, um, yeah. which is really nice because I don't know if any of you, you know, when you're hiking in your Gore-Tex jacket, you do kind of get used to that. <laughs> Especially if you've got your hood up, it's really can be quite irritating. Yeah. Um, Paramo's a much softer, soft shell material, uses Nick Wax technology, um, and is really like really really good yeah it's waterproof in it, it it's in a, a completely different technology so when you see one of those yeah. jackets you might not be immediately sold on it some people love them immediately some people have to warm up to the idea but yeah. essentially in a Gore-Tex jacket you're getting used to those beads you know when you see the water bead in and you can just mm -hmm. knock it like that and it'll all fall off that's when you know Gore-Tex is working um, Nick Wax technology doesn't work like that essentially it just looks wet on the outside but it's dry on the inside yeah. Um, really good technology. I really want to start getting some more of their stuff, but um, it does come at a slight premium. So well, they are they are quite pricey, aren't they? Yeah. So if you want to buy a um, like a Paramo jacket, waterproof yeah. one, four hundred quid, pretty much. Unless you can yeah, sort yeah. of shop around and get a good deal. But if you want like a really really good waterproof jacket that's going to yeah. do you in the mountains of the UK to Nepal to Kili. 400 quid is probably what you're going to be looking to spend. Um, yeah. And I know, hopefully, you can demonstrate the technology with a pair of trow. Funny enough. You're there right. it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, these are um, Paramo waterproof bottoms. So some people ask, you know, do, do I need to take waterproof bottoms on my trek? Uh, it's a really good question. Um, you know, I tend to, the, this is quite heavy. I'd say I probably wouldn't take these, but I would just want to demonstrate the Paramo side of it because you can get a lot of, um, I think it's called the Berghaus Deluge is, is what I take on my tracks, which is 
basically a thinner version, but it does a similar thing. Again, pretty pricey, you know, hundred hundred odd pounds um, for a pair of waterproof bottoms, but it keeps you, it, they are really good. They do keep you really dry. Um, but anyway, the, the reason I got these ones is because they are um, Paramo technology. So they're, they're essentially quite thick. They are quite warm, good to use in winter, winter Scotland, winter North Wales, you know, anywhere you go in winter conditions, these are great. But Paramo is, is definitely, uh, you know, definitely a different way of doing it. Like a lot of actually mountain rescue, a lot of mountain guides, they do use Paramo, they swear by it, yeah. um, you know, because of the quality of it. As I said, it is a bit pricey. Um, like I think there's one called Paramo Velez, which is like a, a smock. You'll see a lot of mountain guides use it. Steve from North Wales, who's coming on our training weekend um, in August and in October. Um, great to see loads of people booking onto the October one as well. Um, is that, yeah, he, he, he wears all um, Paramo. Yeah. Um, and when it's someone like Steve who uses all Paramo, is out in all weathers, you know, it says it all really. Um, yeah. You know, he, he's, he's, he's up, you know, because he worked on Snowden during lockdown for about 18 months uh, just to check the conditions um you know for the local uh, mountain rescue teams and he was up there like four or five times a week you know and if he's wearing paramo on all the conditions you know it, 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 you don't need to leave a review to, to know how good that paramo is if steve says yeah. it's, good, it's good yeah um but yeah so when it when it comes to paramo so certainly look at it but again i go back to what we said in the beginning look at how often you're out you know is it worth spending all that money if you've got it great get out there and use it let us know you get on um be interesting to, to hear you know how you get on with maybe paramo compared to gore-tex or you know I've, I've, i think shona mentioned there as well because gore-tex is a brand and there's so many different variants now of people who have, who have essentially used the same method and created different versions of gore-tex and they call it something else yeah. so many out there i think there's like 20 different versions now. yeah um, i mean, I mean is what, per -tex, isn't it they call it pertex and stuff like that um, yeah there's one called event i think there's uh, geez i I was reading an article yesterday about it, but geez, I mean, there's so many. Um, and then people talk about, you know, the um, the, the Gore-Tex versus Paramo. I'd say the biggest, one of the biggest things as well is weight. Paramo is heavy. If you like lightweight stuff, Gore-Tex is probably better for you. Paramo yeah. is a lot heavier, um, you know, a bit more on the same sort of weight as a down jacket, just to put it, actually probably a little bit heavier in some in some cases. Especially when it's wet. Yeah, so it's certainly something to think about when it comes to comes to waterproof guys. Um, but yeah, um, definitely throw some questions in as well. We've got a few that's come in on email, a few on here as well, just specific ones. Anything to do with waterproofs, especially because of today, anything to do with any, even if it's about the sun, chuck it in. Uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're here for. And um, it's great to see some regulars on here as well. I, I noticed a couple of where is where is he? I think Danny joined us recently, um, recently back from. Well, I say recently back from Killy earlier this year. Um, always good, great to see Danny Mitchell. Yeah, I hope you're good, Danny. Um, who else have we got on? I don't know, a typical John jumps on to, as we're talking about him. It's meant to be, John, meant to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dave, what should we start with the questions? Um, yeah, so let's have a quick look. So, yeah. Um, let's have a quick look. Jerome, Jerome has asked, uh, he has oh. jackets galore, but can the Yetis yeah, recommend a good quality waterproof Ooh. poncho? Ponch. Um, I think the yeah, honest answer is no, I can't. Yeah, they're not that they're specialist, better. are they? They're, they're very yeah. similar. I do think that um, the reuse, the, sorry, the, I don't know whether they're called reusable or dis or if they're disposable. I know that's yeah. a contradiction, but you know, you can buy those like three pound little plastic ones. I'm not a huge fan of them. I tried wearing one on the Glencoe Challenge. I just, it wasn't waterproof. It kind of annoyed me. So yeah. I have seen the ones that uh, are reusable, very definitely. And they're like a yeah. thicker material. Um, you know, it's, I suppose it's kind of like having a tent over you. They're really popular on Killy, um, using they the are, they? Everyone yeah. uses them. Partly because on Kilimanjaro, you can be walking and it's really warm all day. So you're not going to want to have waterproof gear. And then it might just shower for half an hour. So everyone just kind of throws that on and just quickly cover themselves. So I think they're really good in that scenario. Ponchos, to be honest with you, I'll probably have to get back and give you a couple of recommendations maybe next week or something once I've checked into it. But honestly, I just don't rate the... I mean, they're better than nothing. 
And yeah. all you've got is one of those little couple of quid plastic ones. But I honestly think um, uh, a reusable one is going to be better value for money. Um, they don't rip. The other thing with that little one is as soon as I put it over my head, it's stretched. And then over my bag, it's stretched and it didn't have any kind of pockets or anything. So I couldn't, I'd have to go under it to get access to things. So yeah, I think a reusable one that's a purpose built is probably what I'd recommend. Google. Yeah, I'm, definitely. I, um, you know, there's I, just, just a quick Google eggs. I'm really, I haven't got a puncher myself because uh, I use the waterproofs a lot. But I know, yeah, as Dave said there, when you're on Killy, you'll see all the porters and the guides use them. Um, you know, and they're always dry. <laughs> so they're, you know, maybe they don't perspire as as much because they're used to the used to you know hiking up there so much. Um, but you know, certainly they, they 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 use one and it goes over their bag and you know they they stay dry. But yeah, it definitely takes some getting used to. Um, but if you can if you can get one and, and take one with you, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. Um, better to have it than not need it than not need it and not have it. Right, Dave? Is that, is that yeah, like exactly the saying? Um, Sorry, I'm about to sneeze, so I'm trying to read, but that's all right, Andrew. Here we go. Um, okay, here we go. I'll tell you what, I'll take this one on. Tony, um, doing EBC first couple of weeks, November. Lots of videos I've seen. Time being lovely, bright days. I have a shower proof jacket. Do you think this would suffice? Um, November, yeah, uh, it November's r it rarely rains in November in the Everest region, to be fair. I haven't checked there a couple of times in November. It's because okay, a good question, Tony. I mean. If you've got a showerproof jacket, it'd probably be fine. I mean, you, you never know, you know, just put it out there. You'll never know, but I've never had rain that time of year. It's earlier in the season, right, Dave? I, I think early yeah. October into September, you, you're probably going to get some rain. Yeah. So if you go in that time of year, I'd say definitely take one. But some people don't like to hike in their down jackets. Some people don't like to hike in just their base layers and then all their fleece. Some people like to hike in their in their like you know their their waterproofs because yeah. they might like especially if you've got Gore-Tex or, or Gore-Tex tight because it can it's good wicking so you know because it's showerproof I suspect it's light so it's worth taking anyway even if you want it and it, you know some of them are pretty good wind stoppers as well so if it, the wind does pick up and it can do in November especially higher up you know five thousand meters it's good to have it so yeah, yeah I, I'd take it yeah definitely Tony yeah hundred um... percent. I have a quick question here from yeah. my mind. It keeps refreshing. Um, Andy <laughs> Ashford says, down jacket for Killy. Oh, hey, Do Andy. The Rab Nimbus or the Mate and Equipment K7? I have both. Ooh. I probably, I think the Nimbus is, is a lighter weight down jacket. Um, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I'd probably go with the K7, which I know is more of a heavy duty thing. So yeah. um, essentially, one. if you if you're putting a down jacket on, it means it's cold, right? So generally speaking, I don't really trek day to day in it unless it's really cold. So generally, Kalapatar, base camp day when you set off, um, and summit night on Kili are the days that I'll probably wear it. Um, so yeah, I would probably go with the K7 um, because again, if it's cold, yeah. you need a good down jacket. If it's not cold, those mid range ones, they're kind of just in those maybe conditions but i think yeah. if you're layering properly and you've got a good base layer on and a good mid layer that's probably more than enough maybe a base layer a mid layer and this you know it's really good you don't have to wear it just because yeah. it's raining it's a really good it keeps you warm keeps the wind off you um but yeah with regards to down jackets i'd say take the take the mountain equipment the k7 the bigger one if it is bigger you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong no it's, it's a beast it's um it's kind of up there with like the rab infinity pro endurance day like that level Definitely, um, definitely. Well, I think the Rav Nimbus is, a, is 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 on a similar, similar way, but not not as much. I think in terms of you know level yeah. of cold. I think on Killy as well. Like, remind us, Andy, what time of year are you going? Um, I mean, because it, it can get colder any time of the year. Earlier in the year, because it's like Southern Hemisphere, you know, sort of February, March, you know, it does get really cold on the summits. Uh, if you go in like this time of year now, like our summer, it's, it's it tends to be a, it tends to be a bit um um yeah not not so bad but yeah. i i'd go for the k7 yeah just because you you know you, even if all you wear is that it's, it's really good yeah um you go in three weeks yeah it's not long enjoy <laughs> enjoy andy enjoy mate um let's, uh, let's have a look charlene like jerome said can we get a waterproof and third layer integrated i get very hot and four layers is maybe a bit too much yeah it's i'm trying to remember what, what was yeah if you can get any because you, you do get jackets out there that multi-layers you know so you get the one that has 
you know, an outer shell. Then you've got, it has like a, a fleece liner, you know, and they're, they're, they are good. They are good. I'd say they're not as good as if you just get a plain, you know, if you get a proper waterproof that you can then put a fleece under. To me, I think that's because that's what it's built for then. I think sometimes with these th three layer jackets, four layer jackets, they try and fit everything in. I, I, you know, for me, it's almost like they'll, they'll try and fit all weathers. But actually, if you have the stuff that's designed to do what it's doing, like waterproofs are designed to keep you waterproof. I'd rely on that rather than a waterproof part of the four layer jacket, in my opinion. Dave, I, mean, I you know, that, that I, I always lean on. OK, if I want to keep warm, I'm going to wear a down jacket. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, if I want to I keep think... the wind off me. I'm going to get a windproof jacket. If I want to keep the water off me. I'm going to wear a, a waterproof jacket. Right? Yeah, I think that um, when you're when we're talking about hiking, so a lot of the jackets yeah. that are sort of three in one. So they'll have like they'll be waterproof, they'll be insulated and then yeah. they'll have often like a like a down jacket in a layer. I think they're more for hiking. It's too much, you know, for it for all one thing. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. We we like to concentrate on layering. I'm like you, Charlene. I run hot as well. So um, uh, a really good base layer is that is absolutely key. Has to be breathable. A really good base layer will keep you warm um, if it's getting a bit chilly, but it will also allow moisture to move from your body. And as you know, if you if you're out hot and you're sweating, and then you put like a fan on you, you'll feel the evaporation of that, and it'll feel cool. A, de uh, a good base layer does the same thing. Um, a lot of the time, I won't wear three layers unless it's really cold. I'll wear just a base yeah. layer and then perhaps a, a waterproof um, with the vents open. If it does get cold, then I may introduce a third layer. Um, but, you know, that's only if it's cold. So it, I think, and yeah, if you get too hot, take the third layer off. But exactly. if, if you have that option, it's a lot better than disconnecting a jacket, undoing all these poppers and then popping them all back in again when you want to warm up again. Yeah, go for the layering option rather than with one jacket to rule them all. Um, one, one jacket to rule them all. Who, who said that earlier? I think it was Leah, wasn't it? Was it Leah? I think Leah, oh, I, I Leah it. said it earlier, and I was like, "See, so you're on the same wavelength there, Dave." Yeah. Um, and <laughs> starts, uh, oh, sports pursuit question: Do you have to register with them before the site will open? Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you say register is just like getting an Amazon account, you know? Yeah. Just so email have, and. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just email, password, and then use it. It's, I really recommend doing it because um, a lot of their stuff is remarkably cheaper than normal. Sometimes you have some wait times, but they're always doing flash sales. It's one of the places that I'll check fairly regularly. Um, yeah. Like you've got the main one, so Cotswold Outdoor, Go Outdoor, Tiso I really like, um, all those other types of ones. But if you can, go to a local shop, which I also highly recommend. Go to Sports Pursuit, get some good deals. Yeah. Or well, Cotswold, you know, if, you, if you've got a Cotswold near you. Although I did enjoy when we were up doing the Glencoe Challenge um, a few weeks back. So nice to go into Tiso. I, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. It was a brilliant shop. I, I, was, I was like, oh, I would love one of these down here. But yeah. it's probably good that it's, it's so far away that I'm not in there all the time. So, yeah. Well, they've got <laughs> it was a great shop. shop. There's one in Inverness. We went to the one in Aviemore. Um, yeah, but there was a, that was a great local shop as well. I forgot the name of it now, but it's got that. Uh, Kangol Mountain Equipment, I think it was called. Yeah, uh, it's got a lovely cafe called Cheese and Tomatin. I yeah, love it. It's actually I highly recommend um, the food there. Although it didn't work out that day, but I've been there before. It was really good. Um, <laughs> I know Dave's experience wasn't that amazing, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we won't talk about that. Dave. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not a restaurant <laughs> critic, so. <laughs> oh, Karen's like, tell me and I can go for you, Andy. Oh, Karen, you're legend. Thanks, mate. Karen, did I, rumors, sorry, mate, if we missed it, is it your birthday? Um, because I say uh, thanks for the birthday wishes, or has it been your birthday recently? Anyways, it's today, it's previously. Happy birthday, mate. Yeah. Um, I hope, birthday. Employee Pappis, I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, and now you're back because I, I heard you were banned on Facebook as well. Welcome back, mate. Welcome back. Yeah, Karen always gets banned. I think she's, um, <laughs> yeah, she's a controversial figure. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday passed. Oh, mate, I hope you had a top weekend um, and enjoyed it as well. Yeah, well done. Um, okay, just just following some questions, Dave. I know we've we've had a few now, which is great. Uh, let's have a little look. Uh, I think Jerome asked, October, likely to rain on EBC Trek? Um Potentially, yeah, definitely. Jerome, I, I think certainly earlier October, as I mentioned earlier, you might get rained on. Generally, it gets too cold. 
you know, as, as the more you, you creep towards November. Um, and, you know, if any precipitation is there, it'll snow. Um, but I know we've tracked in September, there's a high risk on, you know, on the lower slopes if weather's in. Sometimes you can get, you know, it's fine. But I'd say there's a higher risk in September and the first half of October than the rest of the months um, with rain. So, yeah, take, take your waterproofs, definitely. Yeah. Uh, or a poncho. You've got a poncho because I know you're a poncho, man. And awesome. Uh, Sam Hartle yeah. doing Killy in September. Um, I'm only five awesome. foot. Hey, Sam. Waterproof razors are too long for me. Um, do you need some? I'd recommend getting a pair um, because if yeah. it does rain in on Killy, um, you know, it can it can do so for half an hour, an hour, maybe longer, which is more than yeah. enough time for you to get saturated. It's a bit of an issue with obviously getting the length right. Um, genuinely, I had this question before on a training weekend, and the person was able to get some like child's waterproof ones. Yeah, um, beyond that, that yeah, um, so they were able to go and get some, and they and they did fine. Um, another one uh, to do is I'm pretty certain you can take them and get them like adjusted, because as yeah. long as you're not cutting into the material where you need it to be waterproof, you're just losing excess off the bottom. Um, you know, so I would take buy a pair and get them adjusted, or try and get a child set um that tend to fit just right i actually think the child set was just a bit too short um but it was better than nothing and it basically kept the kept the rain off um, this person's legs as well so yeah check that out nice. try some child sizes or if not um go to your local um timpsons or something and they'll, they'll like get them adjusted for you yeah i was thinking that is it because it yeah depending on your because i know they go from if you can get like 28 inch leg um just thinking if if it can if you can find one i'm sure there's some out yeah, um, they, yeah. They, yeah. google like waterproof trousers for five foot person something like that i know it seems ridiculous but you never know i'm sure there's someone out there who's got the same issue yeah um, but as dave said there's all this is workarounds even if i'm just thinking you can get some water i mean this is just from when i was on glen co uh <laughs> i will um you can have waterproof shorts and buy um, uh, no, gaiters that go up no. to your knees, which I have. No, it's a good style, Dave. It's a great style. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it was, it was like, do you know sometimes you get those fashion shows where they wear really weird stuff? <laughs> um, it was like a really eccentric fashion show. It was. Yeah, for 26 months. Yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Very hot in here. This is nuts. Oh, mate. This thing is just. It's, it's, well, I'll show you. I, I got I got this this fan here. So let's see if it doesn't mess it up. I got that there, which is uh, providing me with some good good heat. Um, uh, what was it? I think Andy mentioned as well. McNaughton Jones. Hey, Andy. Uh, Burghouse ladies waterproof trousers, a shorter leg. Okay, yeah, good. Definitely check that out as well. Awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a way around it. Yeah, and and I I think you would need it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you can, just don't wanna don't wanna have wet bottoms. I mean, you might get lucky. Look. Nothing worse than a soggy bottom. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Andrew Scott. Oh, here we go. Oh, go on, mate. Go on. Okay. Uh, does spraying Gore-Tex with Nick Wax damage its ability to wick properly? Um, it depends because they do different yeah. types of stuff for different types of material. So, you can yeah. get stuff that's specifically designed to reproof Gore-Tex. Um, and then you've got the stuff, the, the Nick Wax technology that's in the Paramo jackets. Um, so it tends to be that whenever I am reproofing a jacket, um, I will find the best stuff specific for that material. So, and quite often the manufacturers, they do recommend stuff quite often because they sell stuff. But honestly, that way you can't go wrong. If you damage your jacket, there's an official product on it that's designed for that jacket, um, then you've got no arguments when you go back to them as well. So um, in my experience, Nick Wax doesn't. I use, I've used Nick Wax Gore-Tex reproofing on my Gore-Tex jackets and it's been yeah. absolutely fine. Um, but say for instance, I was just bought a new jacket and I wasn't familiar with it. Um, I'd probably just buy something from the manufacturer's website and do it that way. Yeah, and, and often as well, when I've bought these, um, like the jackets, like, you know, you've got the Rav, the Burkhouse, um, some of the others I've had, generally on their websites, it'll, it'll recommend these sort of products, especially Nicowax. And there's certain sprays, you can even spray it because it's just the, it, I think if over like a, a, a long period of time, it probably does something to it from a breathability point of view. But because it does make it breathe as much, the more you're out, 
the less it'll get wet so it'll last longer so i think there's a bit of a balance there if you know what i mean it you know if i, I say because i spray it and you know I, and mine's you know i got one there that's lasted that's i think that's five years old that one, i guess and you know if you spray it and, and, and you know you regularly wash it because they got the tech wash um you know be be careful with that because it, it you've got to use it in your um there's a few settings but again if you, if you buy the specific stuff for your jacket or go onto the manufacturer's website and it'll give you instructions recommended products yep. yeah it'll, it'll tell you what to do but um i quite like the nick wax stuff i think it's really good yeah yeah it's good, um, good quality stuff what was that the other guys next to us at keswick what was their name remember the guys they're waterproof co covering as well similar to network what were they called dave I, I it's been bugging me i was trying to remember them earlier if you want to answer a question and okay I will do my, best, look. <laughs> my best to find out because sure, I, sure. I do, yeah, okay, carry, on. carry on. Well, Leah actually asked earlier, and she was talking about one jacket to rule them all, it was a warm slash waterproof combo jacket. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot out there, I'd say, because the warm jackets, like down jackets, that profess to be waterproof or water resistant, to usually put the right in. And nowhere near as good as just waterproofs um i'd say paramo has a better um it does a better job of keeping you warm uh whilst also keeping you waterproof so paramo is probably the closest you're going to get i'd say you know there are really there are jackets out there random ones that you might find that are heavy um they're not down so they might be synthetic layered and then it'll also be waterproof because of the type of material um Grangers, Dave. Is it Grangers? It was Grangers, yeah. Wow. Show did that. I, did that just come to you? Oh, <laughs> sure. yeah. It was Grangers. Literally, as I'm as I'm just scrolling through Keswick Mate and Festivals exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, because they uh, they nabbed some of our dog biscuits, but they were they were really lovely. But the the, the reason I mentioned them is that they are obviously a, sm a lot smaller company, you know, up and coming when it comes to, um, you know, but they're in the, in that in that uh, industry where they do a lot of like waterproof treatments um, and their products look really good um, you know in terms of the you know they're doing demonstrations and stuff and, and yeah they, they seem like really nice people so worth checking them out as well Grangers yeah not nice thanks Shona um, but yeah sorry who was it uh, I think it was someone asked around uh, I think it was Leah yeah Paramo um, which is P-A-R-O-M-O -O, I think it is yeah. Ah, um, oh, jeez. I knew I was one far off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you, if you, yeah. There we go. Karen's put it in there. Yeah, it is really good. It, it, it just is a bit heavier. I still go back to what I say though. If you want a waterproof jacket, get a waterproof jacket. If you want a warm jacket, get a down jacket. Awesome. Personal opinion. I know there again. It's an additional thing, and I know you're in Australia as well. You don't always need the down jacket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you, you certainly need the waterproof from time to time. I bet um but yeah good question though good question I, if, if there are ones that come out because you know there's these companies are always innovating and looking at the new stuff we'll, we'll definitely let you know if there's if there's a good one you know that's like warm and a good um uh, and waterproof yeah awesome um sophie hurst how's it going sophie yeah. um uh, an ebc alumni um hey, I'm waterproof jack mckilly but do i need waterproof trousers uh i have shower proof ones yeah uh yeah get a pair i mean share proof better than none i'll be honest with you when i went to killy i completely forgot <laughs> um and i, 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 I remember to, that dave yeah and i had to borrow a set from our guide yesi <laughs> yesi is i'd say he's about 11 and a half stone of pure muscle um yeah. um and looks like that you know he's, he's like a racing snake um i've probably got 11 and a half stone of muscle underneath a similar <laughs> of insulation um so when i put them on i was walking like up, 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 like, if I, like literally i couldn't bend down i couldn't i was terrified yeah, they, I was were, they were too tight yeah um so my i would just say based on that experience yes you do need some definitely bring your own um yeah. and uh if you've all you've got a shower proof ones just bring them anyway um if you don't get around to getting another pair they're better than nothing um yeah you won't experience yeah. A lot but particularly in the lower altitudes on Killy up to I would say Barranco camp it's very possible yeah. I mean even at Barranco Ward it was a little bit misly and stuff like that 
from that point on we didn't get any rain but from that sort of altitude maybe like mm. three eight something like that up to there it's very likely that you will get showers exactly yeah i say if you could take um yeah so you've got even if they're over trousers i know mark's uh, mentioned there i think when we're talking about waterproof yeah we've got because you've got waterproof bottoms over trousers are just as good yeah um yeah good good point oh what's that so i'm just just looking at some of the comments and i've heard a circuit in november some tina sorry i missed that question just wanted i think, to I, think that means, I think she was asking will it, Is it rain, will it rain? Uh, again, same as same as no same as yeah. it is the same as the <laughs> same, same as Everest. It might do. It's unlikely. You're yeah. coming into winter. Winter in the Himalaya doesn't really mean rain. It means snow and cold temperatures. Um, yeah. So you're more likely to get snow than rain. Really, but um, never say never. You know, we've seen too many weathermen wreck their careers by telling you who was that one famous weatherman that said it wasn't going to rain, and then there was the biggest storm Fish. in the was it, Mark, was, it, was it Michael Fish? Was it Michael Fish, was it? Was it the Fishmeister? I think it uh, was Mr. Fishmeister, yeah. yeah. Although he's, Someone will know. Something like that. Someone will comment on it. Who knows about it? Was he like in the early 90s, late 80s or something? 80s, yeah, 90s, I think. I remember him from my childhood, certainly, because um, he had those big glasses. Yeah, here we go. Shona, yeah, Mr. He, Fish. He's the one that fell, used to do like morning TV, and they used to have this floating raft in the shape of Britain. Really? I, don't, used to, I can't remember. One of them used to jump from sort of Wales to Ireland and uh, one time and then one time he did it and he, wow, that's brave. And, <laughs> and he slipped and landed in the water. Was that fish as well? If it is, he's Could an be. animal. Yeah. So if he fell in, I'm sure he turned into a fish. Yeah. Um, you never know. <laughs> uh, Darren asked, uh, Darren Shabbolt, likely to rain in May on Everest Space Camp. Um, yeah, there we go. The 1987 hurricane. I remember that. My school roof was ripped off. Yeah. Um, so we were off school for a week. Uh, yeah, likely to rain in May. Um, towards the end of May, again, because basically in the monsoon season generally runs from June through to August. But sometimes it comes earlier. Sometimes it arrives later. So it goes in September. Um, so, yeah, there's a potential because it, it does start to get warmer as you creep towards the summer months. Um, where that, you've got March or April is very, very, very unlikely. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I remember walking on the way down from Everest Base Camp. Um, it was like monsoon rain from Tengboche Monastery up well, down to the woods, up through the woods, and to Namche. By the time I got to Namche, it was like rivers yeah. going into Namche, and that was in April. I remember it. So I, it can happen. I remember it. It was like we were like kayaking down into the lodge. It yeah, was but, but it was they hadn't seen that sort of rain before, so it was like at that time of year so it's very rare so yeah. you know darren i'd say definitely you know take your waterproofs you've got waterproof over trousers or bottoms definitely um you know worth taking as well or it, yeah. then i only wore my waterproof but it was quite warm and i think it was about half hour from namche because you know we wanted to get back to namche we started a jog <laughs> so we actually ran back into namche which is pretty good I did. Um, clearly the irish bar was drawing us near after getting to base camp but dave uh, I didn't jog. I think, um, if I remember rightly, that was that time where um, I think you had shingles. That was shingles time. Yeah, yeah. So I remember saying like, "And it's so good to have you with me, mate." I just, I don't think I could do it without you. And then I looked back, and he was gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That was. Um, I, feel, I think, if I remember rightly, you had an energy gel, didn't you? <laughs> well, you, like, I had a group of um, there was eight or nine Americans and they were and, and some of the most amazing people I've ever met, but they were yeah quite competitive. I remember one of them was um, trying to get back to Namche the fastest, and I thought, I'm sure we could do something about this. Um, yeah. So I had an energy gel just to perk me up, and then I don't know why. I think it was because Max and Tom, um, a couple of ever trekkers who, who some of my best friends were quite far ahead. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and catch them up. So I overtook all the Americans, I jogged past them, uh, which is, you know, quite hard, three and a half, four thousand meters. But because I was already acclimatized, it was great. And then, yeah, got into Namche and um, straight to the Irish Park. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, worked out well. Um, although, yeah, you literally could have kayaked down to that Irish Park. Yeah, I remember I, I did a move. <laughs> I did a bivouac I did uh, up on the hill, you know, and just stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you, you got back. <laughs> luckily, no, luckily, you with the guides. <laughs> that, that was a beast of a day, that was. That was a beast of a day. There's a yeah. picture of me somewhere stood in the rain, um, which uh, one of our Canadian friends took. 
and um, the caption was right. It was it was like I'm stood in the woods on the way up to Tengboche, yeah. and um, I'm just stood there like looking mournfully at the weather. And the caption was Dave said he hates the rain or something like. That. <laughs> I do. I don't yeah. like I don't like hiking in the rain. So I don't mind it if it's a bit of a warm day and then you have a shower. I, I, that's refreshing. But imagine it, now it'd be like, oh, oh, get me out, get me out. It would be amazing. But we've done it. <laughs> um, I've said it before where we've arranged to go out and we think the weather's going to be nice. And then sometimes you wake up, you know, if you go trekking with Andy, generally you'll be able, you'll have to set your alarm for like 3.30 in the morning and you can feel like the rain hitting oh. your window. And I'm thinking, well, surely we're not going then. <laughs> and then you get a, a, a call or a text from Andy going, hey, boys, a great weather's great. Like, oh, God, he's absolutely, absolutely. I saw, um, sorry, I know we're going completely off piece. And I, I know we got a couple, more, a couple more questions to answer. Two years ago today, Dave, we did the um, the Wellington bomber in rain. And we took that lovely shortcut. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that was the day I think I remember I realized that Andy confuses shortcut with diversion. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was the, if I remember right, and it was two hours of walking up a steep, boggy bank. Yeah, um, it was it was brutal, wasn't it? Our hips were hurting. Oh yeah, it was because because you were just so you were like off kilter for ages. My feet weren't level for about yeah, walking hours. like that, and the path was going up. It's a good it day though. Yeah. That was a real good day. That was an all dayer as well. I remember we didn't get back till uh, a little bit late. That was yeah. another funny one where we couldn't find the like. As twice me and Andy have gone to this bomber, and we yeah, you um, need to be on over your nav. You need, yeah, you need to like you know be familiar with the uh, the old map and compass and yeah. extant and stuff you know because uh, yeah it's really difficult. John's just commented yet he's in the mist. Uh, it was it was mystifying me. I, I we didn't have the thought <laughs> we were going. Um, wow. Yeah. Sorry. And how long have we been doing that that set of puns for? It's that, be it was years. a while. I, I don't think I'm going to join you because <laughs> <laughs> because um, I don't want to missed these uh questions um so zoe has asked let's have a look uh thinner waterproof with lots of layers underneath versus thicker insulated waterproof with less layers in cold environments like max five degrees especially for times not moving around himalayas march yeah uh, zoe i 100 percent. i think for me thinner waterproof with lots of layers so essentially a waterproof like if it was gore-tex gore-tex pro it's a similar kind of you know it okay you might get they're a little bit thicker than Gore-Tex Pros, but and then you can put layers underneath. Um, and bear that in mind when you're buying a jacket as well. Like, try not to get one that fits too close right away because you want to be able to fit stuff under it. Otherwise, you look like the Michelin Man, and and it, it isn't. You know, you'd be walking like that. You know, so have a little bit of space under your jacket as well for, you know, a mid-layer fleece, for a base layer. Yeah, just just in case. Yeah. Uh, but not not too big that it's like hanging off you. Um, because you know part of why it works is because it does sit relatively close so try and find that balance yeah um uh i think david uh, ned has asked um hey everyone any thoughts on the Alpkit phantom down jacket uh, yeah. have, you, have you ever uh the Alpkit um phantom yeah um it's kind of mid layer I, I not we're not talking the the the, the, the same level i would say as the mountain equipment k7 or yeah, the old Ram Infinity Pro Endurance, which is, I think, called the Proton. Now it's called the Rab Proton, yeah. but it's definitely, I'd say, if you, you've ever seen the Rab Micro Light Alpine, it's probably a bit in between that and the K7s so or the Mountain yeah. Equipment Nightline. It so it's about six fifty seven hundred Phil. It looks all right, actually. Um, was he asked if it would be adequate for Killy? Did he say, or just our opinions on it? Yeah, uh, so it's Himalayas March, so Nepal yeah. March, yeah. Uh, so it's a 650 game fill, so, you know, pretty good. It's designed for a cold weather, um, yeah. and it is quite lofty, which is good, because you need you want a lofty down jacket for a warm one, because it traps more hot air. Yeah. yeah, I would say that's a good down jacket. Yeah, that's a good price. Alp yeah. kit, well, I know a few people that wear that kit, because um, it can often be getting um, for a good price. They do a lot of it on Sport Pursuit as well. I know we talked a little bit about yeah. Sport Pursuit. Um, so yeah, they do, um, they good do a lot of, well. yeah, no, I would say it's a good jacket. Yeah. It's quite, um, yeah, quite chunky, yeah, quite chunky. Just found, it on the web just found it on the website. I think it's like 167 quid, which is amazing for that yeah, sort of jacket. Price, yeah. I've not used yeah. it personally. Nice. Um, yeah. the jacket I use for down jacket, I use the mate and equipment light line at the minute. Um, yeah, it's a really good one. Talk about right. waterproofs. It just started raining here. No way. 
<laughs> Sorry, don't want to sound like Michael Fish. Um, Are you sure that's not just Jen with the hose? No, no, no. It's raining pretty heavy. I knew it was, it was a storm brewing after hot weather. Wow, Happy yeah. Days. Like a good storm. Let's get out there. Um, awesome. But yeah, uh, just going through. I mean, Dave, so we. I've only got five minutes. Just finishing up then the, the waterproof side of things. Ironically, is raining now. Um, just to clarify, so go over what we talked about. You know, you've got your Gore Tex, you've got your Paramo, um, you've got the ones which are like a hundred pound, you've got the ones with six hundred pound. Try and find a balance. What works for your budget? What works for you know? If you want to get the all singing, all dancing one, if you want to get a bomb proof version, um, and then the same as it goes for Paramo and as well as the waterproof bottoms. Um, and whatever trip you go on, it's worth taking because you never know. Yeah. Um, really dave isn't it you got any final thoughts dave around the waterproofs um no I th- I, honestly i think that was a really good one i think we covered that i think you guys have been waiting yeah. for a good kit one um because yeah. that was that was, <laughs> was a good chunk of questions but yeah i think yeah just yeah. to literally echo exactly what andy just said you know yeah. get the best one you possibly can within your budget um yeah. you know shop around and and try and you know get the best deal you can because the more expensive jacket you can get generally speaking you get what you pay for with the main yeah. brands and they are an absolute lifesaver when you need them. Some days you'll go out and it'll be sunny and then all of a sudden it'll start raining and it won't stop for the entire hike and you'll be hiking for seven hours. That is where I think a really good waterproof comes into play. Yeah. Because most shower-proof waterproof jackets will keep you dry, you know, between the pub and the car or on a little walk in the dog session. But to be able to keep you dry on a sustained six, seven, eight, nine, ten hour hike that's yeah. where the quality of the item really comes into play. So do try and get the best you can. But obviously, no one's asking you to uh, sell your car for it. So, um, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Nice one, Dave. Well, look, um, no, it's been great. I think, um, as well, just before we do go, um, we do we have released some new dates for our training weekend in um, in uh, Bracken Beacons, um, the one in October. So do get yourself on that if you're thinking about coming on training weekend. The August one um, is fully booked. Um, but the October one, uh, which is I think 21st of October, 23rd, um, I think we've about half filled that now. So yeah, if you definitely want to jump in, get make sure you get yourself in there. If you're not on a trek or anything, it'd be great to meet you. Yep. Always a great weekend. Um, I think if Jody or Vicky is on the comments, can you just drop the link in um, for that one? That would be smashing. Um, but other than that, guys, yeah, it's been really good today. Really nice to talk about waterproofs. I know it's a bit random one when it's so hot. Um, but we hope it's been useful. And as Dave said earlier, I suppose it's actually good to do it now when it's dry. So then when it is wet, you know what you And it was, it was well thought out, mate. This is, <laughs> you know, me and Andy will look a while at, ago. Yeah, we'll look at the weather, you know, six months in advance and we'll say, what do we think this going to be like on that day? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you are coming to our training weekends in August and October, uh, yeah. probably best to bring your waterproof. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because you never yeah. know. But no, it's been great. Um, yeah, everyone, uh, stay stay safe. I know it's a bit hot out there. Um, a bit of rain. I'm going to go outside and get some rain because I am hot. Um, it's definitely sweaty here. I am about to expire. Like, <laughs> like genuine. I, I'm not exaggerating. I think it's over 30 degrees. I'm in a loft. Um, not yeah, a loft. The hotel in the hall, like, but I'm in my um, in the in the loft, and it's really warm. Yeah, get out, get outside for a bit, mate. Get outside. It's hot. Um, get put that fan back up your shirt, mate. Get it, get it going. Yeah, that's where it's going. <sighs> Stay out of the storm, <sighs> uh, Leah. I love a good storm, although you know from a distance it'll be fine. Um, but right, guys. Yeah, we'll we'll catch you next week and have a wonderful week. Whatever you're doing, anything you need, as always, just reach out um, to us and the team. Um, and if you're going on a trip, enjoy. Post some pictures. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram. Uh, or post in the the Ever Trekkers Facebook group if you do it yeah. you know, if you're out hiking. Always good to see what our Ever Trekkers are up to, and we will see you soon. Bye. Adios.